nice and clean through there. Difficult braking area, but he came into the corner, certainly not too fast. it would have to gauge about this, the entry speed into it, uh, whether he lost anything in the braking. We've taken a split time, he was 49 through there. So we'll gauge it against everybody. Else. Was in the right gear coming into the corner, right speed, got traction, clean out away on a very, very soft exit, very easy to get it wrong. Actually, that was a nice job. And it sounded like an RS1800, yet it was a Toyota Starlet. The modest Toyota Starlet. So Malcolm Robertson, an old friend of mine from 30 years ago, still rallying. What a brave guy. He used to co-drive. Uh, he was uh, minus two on uh, Ewan and uh, tied with Jonathan Smith out of interest. Again, losing a lot under the braking zone, uh, but um, keeping it together. <laughs> So uh, Jonathan holding a little bit more speed through that corner and he was two seconds quicker to this point. Now there's about a 200 metre braking zone into this corner where it's sight unseen on a long, long left-hander. So there was two seconds lost in the braking zone there because you're coming into a known tight corner but still on a very fast section. We gauged it on the walk-in that it was flat until 60 metres before this braking point. However, that was from the spectator's pr perspective and we can be very clever. That's John. Now that, that was very, very tidy. He was keeping it moving, coming up to the corner. He held a bit more speed and he went through on minus, minus four. So he's fastest so far, John McCrow. We can, uh, we can hear a bit of a misfire there. Uh, could that be a legacy from the water splash on the previous stage? It may well be. Uh, Quite nice under the braking, but just lost it at the end. Um, basically, it probably comes down to a, a, a note trust thing. He, he he pushed the brakes too hard, killed a little bit of speed, went a wee bit too sideways. Uh, nice and safe for sure, but then scrubbed the speed. I think he did the right thing, keeping it in second gear going up the hill, because going to first would have just spun the wheels, but as we heard, he had a misfire, so difficult to make a judgment on that. And he was uh, tied with uh, Ewan on 49. Stephen, probably actually the ideal speed round that corner. However, he was he was quite slow in the lead into it. Uh, he was he was minus he was sorry plus three on uh, on Ewan's time. But in terms of round that corner, believe it or not, I would say from the apex to the point that he went out of sight, I would say he was very probably the fastest of the of the sunbeams. And that means he'll have sorry, Peugeot 205s. He would have he would have held all that speed all the way up the uh, up to the next corner and he would have held 3 or 4 kph all the way. Significant to look at, and something to really consider. Well, Scott, Scott kept it going there all the way through the corner, and even though he came in a little bit late on the brakes, very tr tricky corner because it's sight unseen, he kept the car on the line, he fed the steering in, didn't, didn't panic, didn't dab the brakes, go sideways, kept on the line, got the car straight and managed to accelerate clean away. Interestingly, uh, at the entry of the corner, I think he was probably very, very two, two seconds down on John McCrone, but when he went outside, for sure picked up a, a second coming through there. His exit was so clean. It's remarkable, he just got a clean exit. That's the second in a row. The road is cleaning significantly, and it's something to, to, to consider. The, the clean line is offering a huge amount of grip rating. Yeah. That's nice. Jordan very clean through that corner and covered us with a lot of dust. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> you were clean through the corner, mate, but uh, and you kept it moving into the corner. You'd braked a couple of times, but you kept coming back on the power so you didn't lose too much. Uh, still, we need to talk to everyone about carrying speed through fast sections, uh, and that's a pace note thing. What we're looking at here and what I can feel here today is we've got a pace note thing going on here, and that's what we need to do work on. The good thing is we can do that work on the public highway when no one's looking. So, uh, young, young Matt Smith, he, uh, he, he came into sight, he was definitely fastest at the point he came into sight, but he ran wide through the corner. So, and, and you know, he wasn't very much faster. He just, if he just dabbed his brakes, a little bit left foot, 
as he came into the apex, he, he, he probably would have stayed on the line, but he ran quite wide. He came through on 46, so minus three to Ewan, but for sure he lost a second before he went out of sight, 50 metres away, just spinning his wheels. Had to drop down to, I suspect, first gear. Well, Tariq's second ever for Australia, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, he's not doing anything too dramatic there. He's not making any mistakes in terms of through the corner. But again, it's all just down to pace notes and trusting them. You've got to treat the pace notes as if it was a an extra window in the car showing you the road. You've got to be able to vision visualise the road. And and well that's what that's what I did and I think that's what the top drivers do. You've got to be able to see that road and imagine what's coming up. Very important. <laughs> Okay, Sean nice and clean through the corner, but again I could hear we could hear him slowing down very, very early on this long fast section, very fast curves into into this into this tightening corner, which is not a killer corner. Um nobody's even uh, really been near the edge. There's not been any drama. I reckon you could come in here probably 30, 40 miles an hour faster than you want to and get away with it and even carry some of the speed up the road. So it, it Easy to say that as a spectator, I know, but um, it just underlines the need to uh, absolutely uh, uh, fire fire into the notes, get into the notes. Bill Sturrock does a brilliant job. We know his notes are right. Get into it. I'm sure that I'm, sh I'm sure if you phone up Bill, he'll help you with with any questions. I'll probably find Bill's on a premium number, or he will be shortly when you start to phone. <laughs> So uh, he was a minus minus one, quite tidy through the corner. But again, it's, it, it's um, I think we're all losing it in the braking area a little bit here. Um, I know we've said don't brake late, but but that doesn't mean you've got to brake 200 metres before the corner either. The sight unseen corner is a bit of a trick. I think we've actually probably stood on one of the most technical corners in the whole of the the Scottish Championship. In reality, maybe that wasn't so clever of us. Nice clean run through there, actually. Um, we need louder exhausts in these cars, so I can hear them coming down the long straights. I want to know that people are still accelerating, and we couldn't we couldn't hear him at all. It was, it was a hopeless situation. Who was that, Fraser? Luke, Luke, we couldn't hear you. Take your exhaust off, mate. I want to hear the car revving like shit. <laughs> Now, that was that was very tidy. He was on the power before we even saw him. So he'd done his braking early, and he powered all the way through the corner. He was he was on a minus one, but again he definitely just got traction all the way up that slippery road. He he he, he was looking, seeing where the traction was, and no understeer at all. Nice and neutral through the corner, and uh, uh, a, a minus a minus one on our timing. So third or fourth quickest up to this point. OK, uh, um, David Crozier was was actually plus seven there. Um, again, didn't really hear him coming down the road, uh, but clean through the corner. His entry speed was, was, to be honest, probably a little bit slower than it needed to be, but look at the traction he got. Stayed on that clean line, and you can pan round now and just see where the traction is. There's a couple of uh, big bumps on the exit, but they're well within the bounds of all the suspensions to, to keep traction. Nobody's losing traction. The temptation would be to push wide and miss those. You're on the loose stuff, and you're losing time. Well, Graham kept it moving all the way through there, and uh, he was one of the later breakers. Very, very impressive coming down there, but I noticed his time was a bit slow actually, it was, it was a plus two. I don't, I don't understand that because from what we could see, it, it looked okay. He did of course just carry a little bit too much speed in through the corner, a wee lift even coming through the corner would have kept him on the line and avoided him having to drop the clutch a little bit further up the road here. But um, not a bad effort at all actually.